in just a few hours, Tesla is expected to reveal its highly anticipated robo-taxi in an event called We Robot at the Warner Brothers Discovery lot in Los Angeles. But will the actual news live up to the hype? Well, joining us now is Craig Irwin from Roth MKM and Brett Winton from ARK Invest. Guys, welcome. Brett, if I can rent a ride in a self-driving Tesla for less than the cost of an Uber, why would I buy a Tesla? It doesn't matter if you buy a Tesla if they can deliver full self-driving to their fleet of vehicles. In fact, Tesla could not sell another vehicle and just enable full self-driving on its existing fleet, and it would massively increase in value. Uh, if a self-driving taxi can do 100,000 miles a year at a dollar per mile, so less than the cost of an Uber, that could drop somewhere around uh, 50 cents to 25 cents in operating earnings to Tesla per vehicle um, times 100 per year. So one time sale of a vehicle gets you maybe $5,000 in operating profit. If it turns into a robo taxi, that vehicle generates on the order of $20,000, $25,000 in operating profit per year for as long as that vehicle exists. I don't need to sell electric vehicles to people anymore if instead they're going to ride in them as robo taxis. Uh, Craig, I'm skeptical. Rides are a commodity, and I can see the price going down and down uh, if Waymo and others succeed at this as well. But Teslas are a premium product. Uh, how does this uh, robo-taxi product and service live up to these expectations, you think? I think the expectations are nothing but lofty right here. Um, the whole um, expectation around 8S 4.0, you jump in a, in a vehicle and, uh, and it takes you from A to B. Um, with no operator input, um, that is years away. It is many years away. That it's exists today. I rode in a Waymo just last week. You can do it right now. Well, no. <laughs> if you use lidar, if you're doing a, if you're using a camera-based system, like Tesla is, you need to have many more cameras. And the lidar, the lidar-based system gives you spatial. I rode in my Tesla this morning subject, and I pulled out of the parking it's not lot. Not subject and then to I took op my hand optical aberration. <laughs> it's not subject to optical aberration, which is the fundamental flaw of Tesla's system design. So it's not. This is not going to be mainstream. This is not going to be an app update for your Tesla fleet out there. This is just not. It's it. It's not going to be the the hype and the dream that everybody has right now. Brett, what is it going to take yes. from a regulatory approval? Assuming this is technology and capability, we know Craig believes it's not. But you sound like you do believe in this in this capability and the way they're building out this autonomous driving possibility. What is it going to take from a regulatory standpoint to actually see it become reality? Uh, I think, you know, the Waymo case has shown that regulators will respond to data. And Tesla certainly has a volume of assets in field where they can deliver a big volume of data to demonstrate how safe these vehicles are. In fact, I would not be surprised, though there's certainly no guarantee, if they uh, released uh, in this event, announced some hard empirical data on their intervention rate for safety critical interventions. Uh, and um, across a certain threshold, you know, these vehicles, and, and Waymo has demonstrated it, uh, are going to be safer than humans. I would rather put my kid in an autonomous robo-taxi than trust my kid with an Uber driver, for sure. Uh, and so I think even at the same price, uh, robo-taxis are likely to take share from existing ride hail. And we think the size of the market increases by roughly an order of magnitude as you go from that 250 per mile down to a dollar per mile. We think that's a trillion dollar addressable market. Craig, just to play devil's advocate here, optical cameras and neural network, I mean, this is what some of the Chinese autonomous vehicle makers are building out with their infrastructure as well. And you're starting to see that capability being tested in places like China. So why don't you think it could actually come to the U.S., especially at a time where you have a federal government that's cracking down on all that Chinese hardware and software? So I think, I think technologically it's possible, it's doable. But the, the economics don't come together when you're actually burning twice as much electricity to get from A to B, right? The compute, the cost to compute is high, right? So, you know, I'm a big believer in, you know, the future long term of autonomous, but it's not going to be an app update of the ex existing fleet. And these are going to be very different vehicles when they get out on the road. So, you know, it'll be something I also expect the government to be fairly conservative about, right? You know, Waymo has a history, so does Cruise, right, which isn't exactly pretty. And then Tesla's taken a lot of flack for NHTSA, 
right, for the uh, for the accidents over the last several years of people, you know, using FSD. So the, the, the academics out there that look at normalized data, there's a nice Nature paper out, you know, not too long ago, saying that these these vehicles actually at dusk and dawn and when turning have higher error rates than human drivers. You know, hmm. so the reality is 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 a little bit distorted. You know, I, I just I'm I'm a heavy skeptic. I do not see, you know, uh, twenty thousand robocabs on the on the on the road by the end of next year, running around picking people up. I just don't I don't see that happening that easily. I think there is a much higher regulatory and 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 qualification hurdle to get there than than most people appreciate. It's five years late, right? We were off, we were told this is coming in 2019. It's five years late. I think. You know, if we do see, you know, uh, a Waymo-like okay. vehicle, it'll be another five years.